Oh, hey, back again, lesson four. Let's just do this. Wait, one more thing, Dr. Vludman called just as the team was about to squeeze out of the tiny door. I received a communication from the Coast Guard that a barge loaded with mining equipment drifted very close to our island some weeks ago. Apparently, it lost steering power. It would have been a disaster if the barge had tipped and that oily equipment had landed in our waters. Anyway, the crew worked on the steering overnight and by the next morning it had vanished. The mysterious vanishing barge, Kate said. When did this happen? Eh, Ten days before I sent the first porpoise report to Professor Q, said Dr. Vludman. Okay, I'll need the coordinates of the barge's overnight location. It's route here and its final destination, said Kate as she opened a map app on her tablet and keyed in the information. Thank you, Dr. Vludman, Reggie said as he put his notes into his backpack. We'll be sure to tell Professor Q how helpful you've been. Ten minutes later, while Reggie and Kate walked toward the ocean, Jada and Cam spotted a family returning from snorkeling. As they took off their snorkeling equipment, Jada approached the family. I bet you saw a lot of cool things down there, she said, smiling. A little boy piped up. Yeah, we saw the coral reefs. Did you know coral is a skeleton? We saw lots of skeletons. Who are you? asked the boy's mother. We're scientists, said Jada. We've come to study the porpoises. The boy's sister's eyes widened on hearing about the porpoises. I saw something strange, she said, really strange. What? Jada and Cam asked at the same time. Jada pulled out her tablet. Two things, actually, said the girl. Well, one was not so much seeing as not seeing. There weren't any fish on the coral reef. We didn't see one. Jada's ears pricked up. The girl continued. And then this porpoise swam right past us and it looked hungry. It was really thin. I thought for a minute it might try to eat me. The children's mother looked at her daughter, alarmed. You didn't tell me about this, she said. Then she turned to Jada. Is there something wrong with the porpoises? Could, could we be in danger? Jada smiled reassuringly. No, I'm sure it's nothing serious. Just stay away from them for now. I'm sure everything will be fine. And thanks, said Cam, as he waved goodbye to the family. Jada and Cam jogged to meet up with Kate and Reggie. Cam quickly filled them in on what the two children had said. Reggie looked out at the sapphire blue ocean. How strange that there were no fish, none at all. That would certainly explain the porpoise being thin, but where have the fish gone? He removed an empty glass bottle from his lab kit. What's that for? Kate asked. I think we should analyze the water, Reggie said. I have a feeling there's something in it that shouldn't be there and it's driving the fish away. Is that your hypothesis? What you're trying to prove? Cam asked. That's right, Reggie said, as he filled the bottle with a sample of seawater. With a marker, he labeled it surface beach water and added the date and time. He used a thermometer to measure its temperature, and then he also measured the air temperature. I need another sample from deeper in the ocean, and then I'll compare the two, he said, recording everything in his notebook. 